Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today will we... Oh, f*** me. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be talking about the three most interesting things about growing Pygmy Drosera. So if you guys have been growing Drosera or Sundews for a while now, you may know about Pygmy Drosera, Pygmy Sundews. And now this is a very interesting type of sundew in that they're literally so small. If you can see here in these videos, you can see these tiny little plants. And just at the tips of them, they have sticky glands just like a normal sundew would. So I asked on the International Carnivorous Plant Society group, what was the most interesting things about Pygmy Drosera? And this is what people had to say. So we will just discuss these three topics today and learn about what makes these drosteras so unique. Now the first most unique thing that people talk about about these pygmy drosera is that they make gemma. Now what exactly is gemma, right? So in this picture here, you can see that there is a green crown just at the center of the small plant. And now what this actually is, is that the, the gemma are these small little green things that the plant makes and they pop off the plant just as I'm touching it like this you can see them jumping. So these little gemma are specialized leaves that the plant makes to help in spreading the plant around. It is an asexual form of reproduction and it's a trait found only amongst pygmy drosera. As you can see here at the center of the crown of the, this plant here, so you can see there's three little bulbs. Those little bulbs there will form into gemma for the Drosera scorpiodes here, which is actually known to be one of the biggest Drosera. You can see the really big sticky glands out of the leaf of that plant. And just coming over these ones as well, if you look in the center, you may see little circular bodies, which are all gemma. Now that's a very interesting thing about pygmy drosteras that they produce these gamma and when you actually touch the gamma or when a raindrop touches the gamma they fly everywhere they pop out of the, the the crown of the plant one just flew all the way onto my pants but they pop everywhere which causes them to easily grow around all around the mother plant so it's a very good way of actually cultivating your pygmy drosera so you may be wondering, what else makes these plants so special? And the other most interesting thing about them is how small they are. I briefly touched on this already, but these plants are really tiny. Now here's an easy way that we can actually tell the difference between the different Drosera here. If I put my thumb next to this Drosera pelchella, you can see that the Drosera is about the same size as my thumb. But if I have to move my thumb over, and put it next to these drosera here, you can see that these drosera are about the quarter of the size of my thumb. And if I put my thumb next to the drosera scorpiodes, you can see that the plant, the whole plant is much longer than my thumb. It just shows you the great variation in size of these pygmy drosera, which is really what they're known for is, is mainly their size. And the next thing that people mentioned was their growth rate. Now, I don't really understand why people would talk about these plants' growth rates as I find their growth rate to be pretty standard. Although when you do grow them from Gemma, they do grow much slower. It takes them quite a while to get to this adult size. And I'll actually show you some of my baby pygmies that I have growing, that I've been growing for about six months now. So as you can see here, this is a small Drosera warrior, and there's another one there. I have been growing these for about six months now, and they're still nowhere near the size of their parent plants. As you can see here, the parent plants are much bigger and much more developed. I'll put my thumb next to it, you can see again. So you can see that these plants are much smaller. And growing them from seed as well. 
I've never I've never really grown drosera from seed, although the polchella I got was grown from seed. I've never really noticed them to be much of a slow grower. I think they grow pretty pretty standard and even their catching rates of insects is pretty normal to other drosera. I'm not really sure why people would comment on the rate of their growth. So a couple more interesting things about the pygmy drosera. They come from Australia. They're used to getting wet winters and dry summers, which is how they adapted having these little white hairs to help get rid of any extra sunlight that hits the plant. It's a very clever adaption. And the fact that they are used to growing in winter, which is when the gemma sprout, is that when it rains on the plant and hits the gemma, the gemma explode and literally go all over the environment that they're growing in, which really does help in spreading the plants around the area. They eat small insects such as mosquitoes, midges, gnats, mites, anything that is small enough to get onto their tiny little traps. And in cultivation, you can keep them growing throughout the year just by keeping them sitting in a tray of water. You don't have to mimic having a water fluctuation just like they would have in the wild. That's not really necessary. Another interesting thing about pygmy drosera is that they have really pretty flowers. If you're following me on Instagram, you may see the post, you may have seen the post that I've put up where all of the pygmy drosera were flying at the exact same time. They're really pretty flowers, all of different colors. And sometimes the flowers are actually bigger than the plants, which is quite unique. So if you guys found this video interesting, please leave a like. And remember to subscribe as every week I post a new video about the growth, care and cultivation of carnivorous plants. See you guys next time.